look who decided to come out and eat. I've been just coming in with a can of cat food. They have food and water in their litter box right there. But I've been just coming in with a can of cat food morning and night. And this is Lily. And underneath there, can't see her berry except for just the white on her. Here's Miss Daisy. She still hasn't come out yet, but she sits and watches. And these are the two new barn cats that I adopted from the local animal control. They were born there. They're five months old. And they were crazy friendly at the animal control in their own environment. And then I got them here and they went into flight mode. Now every animal has the fight or flight instinct in them and they went into flight. And I have just been patiently waiting for them to come around, showing them nothing but gentle love when they do. And we're making steps in the right direction. So this morning, I'm in the, I'm in the what will be the cool room in the shop. And obviously I still have to move this bed out, but, and that will be the canning room. And so what I've actually done is I've actually closed the door that's behind this door. It's actually in, it's on that wall, but it's in that room. And I've closed that door and I've also closed that door over there to the bathroom. Um, and that locks these girls into these two rooms so that I can open the big garage door in the shop and pull my lawnmower in and out and my four-wheeler. I got the four-wheeler back from the shop yesterday. I'm so excited about that. It's just a workhorse, um, but it's nice to have my workhorse back. Uh, so that way I can open up the garage. Rogi is acclimated enough that she's ready to be able to go in and out and have her freedom and enjoy her new farm. So she is out in the big shop part and these two little girls will just stay locked in here until they go in and get spayed. And then they'll be free to roam about the property. But for now, we're keeping them safe in here away from any meandering toms that may be out there and getting to know them. Oh, she moved spots. Now she's over there. She kind of does that. I left a little bit of cat food on the bed there for her, just to try to get her to come a little closer. And she kind of goes back and forth and back and forth, but she's not growling and she's not running. She's just laying there watching. So in a matter of no time, I'll have them both down here being little piggies. I found Rogie's hiding place. <laughs> Good morning. That's an interesting place to make a bed. Hi. How are you? I put out some snacks for you. Today's your big day. I'm gonna open up the garage door. Yeah. You get to go out if you want. Yeah. See your new farm. You ready for that? 
Yes, okay. Well, then let's get her done. Good morning. Welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. And today on the Arkansas farm, the weather is beautiful. We're supposed to have a high of 79, but as you can see, the wind is blowing pretty hard today. Um, so we've just got farming chores to do today. Um, so I will probably put you guys on just time lapse and for a lot of this like pasture work that I'm doing, I'm gonna be setting up Velvet's um, pasture and letting all the big kids come out and graze a little bit in their pens and um, whatever else I can get myself into. I've got all kinds of things to do. I don't know if I'll get to all of them on this video, but I may or may not have succumbed to my bleeding heart at the nursery and picked up some flowers. Um, you know me and pretty things. I just can't, I just can't not have them. So of course that was one of my first stops. Um, and I've got, you know, just a ton of mowing and weedy whacking to do still. We have a storm rolling in this evening. Um, so I've got to go out and get all the stuff harvested out of the garden that is ready to go and um, start getting that processing. So um, lots of tasks to do. I don't know if I'll get to all of them today on this video, but um, we're going to get started. I'm going to flip you around, show you what I've got here, um, and start working. So I've got all the dogs out here with me. She's over there hunting. Rumor standing guard for something that she smells. But anyway, um, they're out here enjoying the beautiful breezy morning that we're having. Um, it's already up to about 70 degrees. It's going to get to 79 today, as I said. Um, but it's pretty windy. So on the four-wheeler here, I'm so happy to have my four-wheeler. Um, I have my fence charger, my fence tape, electric fence tape. Um, I've got some wire, uh, a fence tester, and some other tools. My gloves, some clips that I'm gonna put on, hopefully put on the fence charger, um, some scissors to cut the tape, some wire cutters to cut the wire. Uh, there's a gate handle there. And this is just going to be super simple. I've already got all the stakes up and we're using our permanent fencing um, on almost completely two sides. It goes all the way down to like right there. That's the corner where all that sage grass is. And um, then it, you know, it comes across right here meets back up with my electric fence and then the electric fencing you can see the the posts purple posts and they come all the way down to there and back up to that corner and then they'll meet back up to that fence there uh, so this is just her first pasture I really want to try to rotationally graze my animals as much as possible and so this is the beginning of that um, I picked up, if anybody has the question, I picked up these uh, fence posts, these portable fence posts that are really cool at Tractor Supply. First of all, they're purple, so I mean, but they've got all these different uh, hooks for your, your hot wire. And let's see if I can get it here. They pull. Sort of. Out of the ground, I have a stake, a metal stake on the bottom of them, and then a foot pedal. And so all you do is put your pointed end down and you step on it. And there it is. Super easy to put up and move. 
I'm just gonna do one strand of tape for Velvet. She's a really, really good horse. I hope she doesn't prove me wrong. So let's get started. Okay, we have a pasture for Velvet, and now, after three trips to town, I now have a runner line, I have a station, which is a, kind of a central station to this half of the property, so I can run, you know, runner lines to my 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 pastures as they're in segments you know one there then one there and then one there then one there and then there and then there all the way down to the storm shelter is where i'll run my pastures and maybe even beyond that until i get gardens in so anywho i did that i got my ground rod it is in i'm gonna say four feet it's as far as i can get it Got all the proper equipment. Um, went and got the uh, the five eighths clamp, the proper clamp. I got the proper wire, um, and hooked it up to my charger, which is this was free. This was actually left here by the person that we bought the house from, and. I just tested the charger and it's putting out 7,000 volts. So it's at the top of my tester. Now I am going to turn it on. I've hooked it up to the fence now with my handy dandy little clamp that I made. It is on. It is blinking. Now we get to go around and test it. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to test it, you know, at Velvet's pasture. She is so easy on fences, I don't think she'll ever even touch it, but I'm just going to test it um, just to make sure that it's hot so she can hear it. If she can hear it, she won't touch it. Of course, I hope she doesn't make a liar out of me. So, got my handy dandy fence charger here. I can hear it popping where I tied that runner line into it. Anybody want to touch it? No? Nobody? Okay. I don't want to touch it either, so we'll use the fence charger today. into this little guy it comes with a little probe like this it's got a little probe and a cord that goes all the way to this guy so I'm gonna put that probe into the ground all the way and then I'm going to hook this onto the fence See that? We're popping in between six and seven thousand. That, my friends, is hotter than a cat on a roof. On a, wait a minute, but how did I say that? Well, I can't say it the way my mama used to say it. Um, hotter than a cat, yeah, on a tin roof. Anywho, uh, this project has taken me all day, and so I'm probably going to do my evening chores, get everybody settled in for the storm that's coming, 
As you can see, the skies have turned beautiful gray. Get everybody fed dinner and then start my dinner and catch back up with you tomorrow when it's pretty again. Good morning, you guys. Uh, hopefully today will be a more productive day than yesterday. <clears throat> um, it is a chilly 45 degrees and here at our farm in Arkansas and uh, we made it through the storms last night. They were, as a newbie, they were pretty severe, um, severe enough that I went and swept out my safe place just in case I needed it <laughs> um, and stayed up watching the weather which is something that I kind of enjoy anyway I'm kind of a turning into a bit of a weather nerd um, but I will yesterday was just a really hard day to video um, I was I had to run to the store three times just for the the uh, hot wire experience, um, which I didn't expect at all, and um, it was hard to get footage because the wind was blowing so bad. So it's breezy today, also, but um, and much cooler. It definitely feels like fall today, um, and of course, it's you know snowing leaves. It's it's pretty interesting. Um, coming from somewhere that's nothing but pine trees, the leaves falling is, is kind of magical. Um, so we're going to head back out to the barn and uh, hopefully put that hot wire to use with Miss Velvet this morning and see what else we can get into um, to make this a semi-enjoyable video for you. Come along. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into on our little five acre farm.
the neglected garden we go. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. <laughs> We're gonna go take what we can out of this neglected garden and get it processed. All the leaves you guys it's overwhelming Yeah, I was out here in this garden and, you know, I'm just digging through the weeds to try to harvest what I can. And look at the size of those mushroom. I believe those are oysters. They're dead now. They're dark brown. Holy cannoli. Those were huge at one time. 
there really is not nearly as much as you would think because so much of it, because it's neglected and on the ground, so much of it is pest ridden. That tomato's coming, but it's got a big split in it. Sprinkles is almost ready. Not quite. That is what we got. So I put the okra pod here and this is a cucumber that I am going to work on saving seeds from and then I washed everybody else. The pumpkin, I have plans to um, make pumpkin puree for pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. This is a squash that I will try to eat. Um, I've never had it before. These are cucumbers that they went too far, but they're not, they're still on the borderline of maybe I can eat them. And I love cucumbers. So I'm gonna cut them up and see what's inside of them. And um, if I can eat them, I will. And if I can't, then we'll compost them. And then these are the chili peppers that were still good. Um, and I'm just gonna dice these, uh, probably just cut them in half, dehydrate them, and then make them into red pepper flakes. Uh, because they are cayenne peppers. Um, so there was a lot of things that you saw me walk past and I just want to explain why. Um, like I said, this was a neglected garden. It was not taken care of all summer long. I planted the seeds in June and then left. Um, so what did grow is a gift, um, but a lot of things are past due. Uh, for instance, the, the big yellow eggplant that was supposed to be a Casper eggplant and they're white. And when they get too old, they turn yellow. So it was no longer good. So I just cut it off the plant and let it focus its energy on the eggplant that it does still have growing. Do I have hope that that eggplant will be able to reach maturity. I have hope, but you know, we are at the very end of the season here. So a lot of stuff could freeze by the end of the week. We've got some really low temperatures. So um, there was a lot of chili peppers that were already on the ground. They had bugs in them. There was a lot of tomatoes, same scenario, rotten bugs in them, cracked. Um, there were eggplants on the um, the purple eggplant that they had cracked because I didn't get to them before the rain. Um, so I cut them off and let the plant focus again on the ones that it has on the vine. Um, the tomatoes out here in the no dig garden uh, next to the house, there's a lot of tomatoes on there that are green. There was also a lot that are damaged and no good to eat. So I did not bring them in the house. So we'll see if we get anything from that, but I'm going to go ahead and um, get started on processing this stuff. I will take you along um, for some of it, but for now, I think that you guys have had enough of me for one video and I am going to uh, cut this off and say thank you very, very much for stopping by my homestead. and growing in this journey with me and going on my silly adventures. Um, have to say that uh, I'm excited about the new barn cats and I'm, I was, I was wooed to tears to see my horse out in a pasture grazing, eating grass and running her little fool head off at 26 years old. She has reached her heaven and I gave it to her. So 
I am feeling extremely blessed, extremely grateful, and I know that a lot of what I'm showing you right now is, it's not a super productive farm. It's a lot of it's in a neglected state. A lot of it's cleanup projects. A lot of it's, you know, just getting things started. But I want to, I want to show that to you. I want to take you along and I appreciate you coming. So I hope you guys have a beautiful day. It is kind of blustery and cool here today, but uh, we're going to stay in the kitchen and get some processing done. And then um, maybe if the sun comes out, we'll go out and do some yard work and uh, plant some flowers. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you on the next one. Yours truly.